Maybe they probably found the cure to cancer. Hey all welcome back to my channel, and if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. My name is Angelica, also known as your college sis on TikTok, and I like to make videos on college, lifestyle, productivity, fun stuff, so don't forget to click subscribe, follow me on my social media, and join the community. Special shout out to my friend Rachel for hooking it up with that beautiful digital doodle animation of me at the beginning of this video. So definitely go check her out, support her, follow her, DM her with all your artistic needs. She is so talented, and we love supporting artists. Today we are going to be talking about the college application process and I'm going to be giving you all my best tips and advice to help you get into your top schools. Whether you are a 9th grader or a 12th grader, there are services out there that are charging thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars to help you curate your resume, your story, your extracurriculars, and package it into this beautiful gift box for colleges. But you know I always got you guys, I'm looking out for you all, so we are going to be going over all those things today. If you are interested in getting free personalized one-on-one -on -one college admission help, advice, essay editing sessions with me. Stay till the end of the video to learn how and let's get straight to the video. I just want to say that I know the college admissions application process is very flawed, biased, controversial, broken, but this is the system we are part of so we kind of have to play by their rules unless there's like a whole shift in the education system. I am well aware that there are so many barriers and privileges and luck and opportunities and random things that go into this process and I'm going to be the first one to tell you that any person on the internet that's like well I feel like I got into blank school because I worked hard had good grades and really passionate about certain things that's absolute BS because we don't know why we got into any school and there's so many people who work hard have perfect grades have really great passions went above and beyond and still did not get into their dream school so there's so many things that are unexplained and we don't know and I just want to talk about that and address that head on. Hopefully this video helps you eliminate as many biases as possible but it is not a perfect system. So first things first, grades and test scores. I know nobody wants to talk about this but we have to talk about it, we're gonna knock it out of the way. They are important but they are not everything but they are important. Does that make sense? Sadly, a lot of the American universities still operate on those test scores and GPA as a benchmark way to indicate, oh, could this be a potential fit? I always get those people who comment on my content saying like, well, my friend's sister's wife's sister's friend got a negative 1.7 GPA and a negative 20 SAT score, and she still got into Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, huh? Grades don't matter. And you know what? If you think that's going to work, why don't you try it and let me know how that works. Generally, the 99% of the people who get into these schools, you can see their average test scores. I would use the majority of people as a way to gauge yourself rather than the special cases with super special traits, extracurriculars. Maybe they probably found the cure to cancer. So just aim to be in the averages of the school that you apply to, whether it's SAT, ACTs, and also GPA. And if you're looking for better study habits, I have a whole video about that which I'm going to link right here and also down below, so definitely go ahead and check that out. So the next one is the most important thing I want you all to take away from this video, which is building your story. So when you get to high school, or even if you're just creating your application as a junior or senior, always think about how this is going to look as like the big picture. So you want to really identify yourself as like a single persona. Are you the athlete? Are you the theater kid? Are you the community service kid? Are you the science kid? So it doesn't have to be all academic related, but you kind of want a slapped on label of things that that your activities, your course load, your letter recommendation, your work experiences, your skill sets, your interests, your hobbies, they all come together to tell one unified story of like, oh, that's who Angelica is. For example, when I was applying to colleges, I was the figure skater, also interested in journalism because most of my extracurriculars and awards were in figure skating and journalism, and I also was in those activities the most. So I'm not saying purposely try to create a story if you don't really have one, although I guess you could do that if you really have no interests or passions. You do you to each their own. But I would say naturally as people, different hobbies and interests kind of naturally fall in line with each other and they have common themes, whether it's creativity, or leadership, community service, analytical thinking. So figuring out what that narrative for you is really key because from there you can start picking and choosing your extracurriculars, the classes you want to take, the special projects you want to do. So once you have your story down, a lot of it's going to be much easier to try to weave it together and create one cohesive mission, brand, identity statement for you when you're marketing yourself to these colleges. 
So next are extracurriculars and on the Common App, which is the portal you use to apply to private schools, you actually only get 10 spots to fill out your extracurriculars. I advise people to not use all 10 of those spots unless they are completely distinct and unique from one another. I always advise people to stick to like three to seven really strong extracurriculars that you can talk about in detail, show your impact. The most important thing is that even if you're going to list a lot, make sure everything is in line with your story. It's not going to be disorganized or jumbled or random. You can do a million things in high school. I just hope that you don't put every single one of those down because some people, we just do things because we wanted to and they don't have to necessarily go on our college application. And when you are talking about your extracurriculars, make sure you are showing them what you did, how you did it, and what were the results. You wanna measure by numbers, show your impact, and show your change. This way they know exactly the skill sets you use and the amount of net positive things you brought to these organizations. There's a lot of really cool things you could do at the local level, like YMCA, city council, working with government officials. These things are often overlooked and people don't take them as seriously, but I feel like these letter of recommendations and working for the city of blank is so impressive and very credible, so definitely go ahead and look into that. In terms of picking schools and colleges, I always recommend people pick safety schools, target schools, and reach schools. These are all picked by looking at your SAT, ACT test scores and also your GPA because that's only the given public information out there to compare yourself to. Safety schools are schools you are much above the average and you feel pretty good about getting in. Target schools are schools that you fall into the average, maybe you're above average, but you feel pretty good about it and it's like a I feel like I'm going to get in type of school and reach schools depending on what that school is are schools that are aka reach and if your reach school is a top 20 school all those schools pretty much have the same median test scores and GPAs so at that point it doesn't make it a reach school because of your test scores or grades it's more about your extracurriculars and your story and your essay so those are kind of reaches for everybody and it's always a shot in the dark also pick schools that you actually want to go to because there's a little bit of a marginal diminishing return if you just apply to every school that you're just kind of interested in, you're not gonna spend as much good time on each essay and crafting that story of why blank. So limit your number of schools, which actually makes you more invested in each school you apply to, hence increasing your chances of putting more effort and maybe the chances of you getting in. Do your research, figure out what matters to you, culture, academic, program, city, weather, parties, no parties, anything like that, figure out why you wanna to go to that school. And in terms of letters of recommendation, I think it is suggested that you ask junior year teachers because they are the most recent and they've seen your work and know you the most recently. But I think if you have a good relationship with a sophomore year teacher, that is completely fine. I believe a lot of private schools and public schools who ask for letters of recommendation suggest you ask a core teacher that's English, history, science. So try to figure out if any of those teachers you did really well in or have a good relationship with. You could also have employers or professors from local colleges you've worked with or your volunteer organizer to write letters of recommendation for you to talk about more of your out of class leadership, your commitment to different activities and such. And for all my seniors out there, this one's for you. When it comes to writing your college application essays, pick a prompt that you could write naturally, effortlessly, and authentically to. I made a mistake of picking the difficult prompt. I think the common apps have all been pretty similar in terms of the questions, but for me, I chose the what problem in the world would you fix and how would you fix it? This prompt is really difficult because you can't pick too big of a problem like I want to cure world hunger, but you can't pick too small of a problem because then it's like, why didn't you fix it already? And so you also have to be pretty knowledgeable in that industry or space to offer technical solutions. So it is a difficult prompt. So pick a prompt you can write naturally to and authentically to. People always ask me, Angelica, can I write about this? Can I write about that? And I always tell people you can write about anything and everything as long as it is under your brand, who you are, tells them a story about an authentic experience or a quality about you. When it comes to sob stories or pity stories, go ahead and write about your hardest struggles and moments. That's completely okay. The key point here is that you talk about how you've changed, how you've grown, and what you are going to be doing next. People don't have a problem with reading a sad story in the beginning, but people also like to read a happy ending. So talking about what you're going to do forward, how are you going to make a change, and how you've changed yourself is a really important takeaway. Don't forget to reach out to your English teachers to help you out with your essays. One, it's going to be free. And two, these people read essays for a living. They grade your essays and they probably read a million college application essays. So grammar structure, sentence structure, 
essay ideas? Is it boring? Is it not? They're going to give you some great feedback as well. It's really important to keep your essays engaging and concise and enjoyable and easy to read because these readers will take 10 to 15 seconds to decide whether or not they like this essay or not. Just like how we decide pretty quickly if we're going to like a book or not from just the way that they write. So definitely make it as enjoyable and as easy as possible. If you don't use hard vocab in your everyday language, please do not put them in your essays because it's going to sound inorganic and unnatural. If you are just right clicking and doing synonyms, don't do that either because it's not going to be used correctly either. So keep it as close to your everyday writing as possible. So last but not least, it is standing out and right now it is so competitive and hard to get into colleges. So you can do all those things I've listed before and still not be able to stand out. It is all about elevating and leveling up your extracurriculars and your passions. What I mean by this is taking your interests and your passions to the next level level up like Ciara said and taking them beyond the classroom or your city even and taking it to the national scale or the global scale or even the internet scale. For example, if you are really interested in STEM, competing in competitions regionally, nationally and globally looks really good for credibility and that you are serious about this. For personal projects, if you are really interested in animal rights, maybe starting a YouTube channel or a TikTok or an Instagram talking about animal rights and why they're important to you and educating people. This way you can show results, growth, you're gonna have numbers, followers, likes, and you can talk about how dedicated you are to these things. So having more like concrete examples of how you took your passion and you put it into the real world is really key in standing out and showing your further commitment, credibility, and your awesomeness. <laughs> So now talking about the free one-on-one -on -one college consulting help I will be offering. Every day I will be picking a winner randomly, so five winners a week to go over your resume, your story, your extracurriculars and essays if you are going to be a senior. This service is offered for anyone who is going to be a ninth, 10th, 11th, or 12th grader in the fall of 2020. It's really simple. All you have to do is fill out this form on the screen, also linked below. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow me on my Instagram, follow me on my TikTok, and there are additional ways you can get more entries, so definitely go ahead and check out that link. Again, it is completely free. I was not comfortable with charging people money right now, and I just get too many requests every day to help people out, so this was the fairest process I could think of. Thank you so much for watching and if you found this video informative, don't forget to click subscribe, follow me on my social media and stay connected with the community. Comment below your dream college, your dream major, your dream programs. I want to know what you guys are trying to do and what you've been up to and I will see you all in the next one.